Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Here we are back at the test environment or back at the organ test lab, I suppose you could say. And uh, we're once again looking at the wonderful world of the cinema organ and in fact the wonder organ, as it is officially called, this very one here. This is what it sounds like. Back in a minute. Theatre organ sounds, of course, very, very different and also looks very different to a classical or church organ. But I'm guessing that some of you out there are also interested in the theatre organ world. Um, I don't know if you know this, but 2021 is, at least here in Germany, year of the organ. How, how useful is that? So, um, yeah, so it gives me an excuse, of course, to make as many organ videos as possible. But it also gives me the chance to show people that the organ world is not the sort of the stuffy old snobby, churchy organ world that people tend to think it might be. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm going a bit out on the line here because um, I know an awful lot of people in the organ world and uh, I certainly don't want to offend anybody that I know personally, but I, have, I do have to admit there are some rather freaky people out there in the organ world and uh, I like to think that us YouTubers here, there are some organ channels here on YouTube and I like to think that we're doing our part to um, change that image somewhat. And um, I like to think that um, I'm part of that movement as well. So um, we get to sort of try to change the image of the organ world as much as we can. It's a cool instrument. It's a weird instrument. It's a cool instrument, but uh, it's a very versatile thing. And I think more people need to know about it. So if you haven't already, click up there on the link to the uh, Hauptwerk organ playlist that I put together. Um, this <coughs> array of manuals, and there is a pedal down there, um, all these things, um, I've been putting this together by myself over the past few weeks. And um, I always wanted to have my own playable instrument at home. And uh, there are people out there who will sell you one, and they're ludicrously expensive. So I thought, well, I can put one together by myself, can't I? And uh, so far, it's actually been a lot easier than I thought. Now, it's still very bare bones and uh, we're getting there. But have a, have a look at the playlist videos there, the Hauptwerk playlist. And that sort of shows you what steps we've had to get to this point here, where I now have a playable instrument. It's certainly not complete by any stretch of the imagination. Like I say, it's very bare bones. Um, if you have a look at this organ console here, and obviously I won't be building anything as opulent as this or as kitschish as that. But anyway, um, I basically need something at the side of the manuals here to sort of hold them together. And obviously I need these sort of um, these bits in between here where I have my control buttons and pistons it takes to control different registrations. Now at the moment I don't have any of those controls. This is very bare, like I said. So um, bear with me for the moment. Too many puns today, sorry about that. Uh, bear with me for the moment, we are getting there. But I'm using the opportunity to test this thing and while I'm testing it, I'm gonna make some content for you guys. And I thought we'd start out with a bit of fun again here with our rather wonderful Wonder Morton cinema organ. Hmm. So for those who don't actually know what is a cinema organ, well, it's basically an organ you might find in a cinema. Or shall we say you might have found in a cinema because there aren't many cinemas left with organs in them. Now we're talking about the movie palaces of the early years of the movie industry. So back in the 20s and 30s when television wasn't such a big thing and when people wanted to you know, go out and experience something rather wonderful, they went to the movies and they went to the cinemas. And certainly in most of the, shall we say, Western world, um, Cinema was a very big part of people's lives in those days. Now, the first films were, of course, silent films. They were accompanied by, at the beginning, a small sort of band of musicians, like a little sort of chamber orchestra. That, of course, became expensive to pay lots of people, so they started just having a piano in the corner. But a piano wasn't loud enough to fill out the whole cinema, so they came up with the idea of an organ. 
I wonder where they came up with that idea. Now, this was an invention. It was an invention of various people, but it's credited back to a guy called Robert Hope Jones, who was an English organ builder who fled the UK and went to live in America. And his ideas were sort of picked up by the Wurlitzer Company. Now, everyone knows the name of the mighty Wurlitzer. And certainly Wurlitzer went on to be quite famous for things like jukeboxes. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm condensing this rather a lot. So any cinema organ freaks out there who are already shaking their heads at me, just uh, bear with me. This is for the, for the general folk out there who don't really know yet. So um, I'm shortening the story quite a bit. And then, of course, other companies cottoned on to the idea and started building these organs as well. Um, the idea was... An organ is quite a useful instrument, don't forget, because you have, well, let's say if you have several different manuals, you can obviously have several different sounds playable at the same time. You just swap quickly between them. And um, different colours of sounds, shall we say, from the different stops you can use, and we'll come to that in a moment. And um, whereas a church organ is primarily built to accompany church services or choirs or both, um, a cinema organ had to fulfill a rather different purpose. It was sort of designed to replace an entire orchestra. So the sounds within a cinema organ, now cinema organs are also pipe organs. The sounds are created through air passing through pipes. And there is a sort of electro-pneumatic or on some organs just an electrical connection between the keys and the pipes and all the stops and things. Um, but it's, the sound is created in the same way a church organ sound is created. So but they're voiced very differently to imitate different instruments of an orchestra. And we'll get to that in a minute as well. This is just the background bit. So, uh, yeah, let's get into the sound of a cinema organ and uh, see what we can do. So the beauty of this wonderful piece of software here, which, software which is called Hauptwerk. Um, Hauptwerk is, of course, the German word for great on an organ. You have various divisions of an organ, and one of those is called the great organ. It's where all the, or where the loudest pipes can be found normally, and the German for that is Hauptwerk, main work, as it were. So um, that's what this software is called, because it controls organs. But because it control, controls pipe organs, the developers also came up with the idea of cinema organs for it, which is rather wonderful. Now, there are a lot of free cinema organs that can be downloaded out there, and this is not one of them. This is my first officially purchased organ, and I'm very excited. I just deliberately went for a cinema organ because and I deliberately went for this one because that sounds absolutely wonderful. It is also extendable. This is sort of the basic version. And as time and funds allow, I shall, of course, be extending it. And it will be even bigger and even better. But here it is. And as you can see, we have one, two, three, four manuals. And ta-da, I have four manuals. Now, in the last video where we got this up and running, I had sort of said to you that I was going to use the fourth manual to, you know, have for all these control possibilities here, these control possibilities here, pistons, registrations and things like that. But seeing as I have a four manual instrument and I have four manuals, it would be silly not to use that. So the four manuals are set up to correspond to the four manuals of the instrument and... I have rather cleverly, I'm very proud of myself, I've rather cleverly taken the top few pedals from my pedal board, the keys that you play with your feet, I've taken them to control some of the other things there. When you're playing a cinema organ, a, a normal cinema organ pedal board has 32 pedals, and the majority, let's just say the majority of cinema organ players will concentrate on shall we say, the first one and a half octaves from the bottom up. We're talking about bass here, yeah? So the further up you get, the less bass you have. And it's just most cinema organ players use their left foot to play the pedals and they have their right foot here on these volume controls, swell pedals they're called. So that's a sort of basic cinema organ technique. Obviously you can and do use both feet when it's necessary to play the keys, but don't have to. So I've sort of, I've sacrificed a couple of the notes at the top end of the pedal board to control some settings there. So. If I swap over to this view, that looks much more complicated now, doesn't it? That is basically a condensed view of all the stops and controls on this organ. Now, this is the four manual, 23 rank, Wonder Morton virtual pipe organ. Now, that's quite a mouthful, but uh, that's what it is, and this is what it looks like. And um, first thing you see is probably that there are some different colored stops. And this is something that a lot of cinema organ, um, cinema organ builders 
used throughout history and I'm guessing it was, well, it's obviously it's for ease of use. Um, the red stops are a certain kind of sound. The white stops also have a different kind of sound. And the yellow ones also have a different kind of sound on this particular instrument. Now, on a Wurlitzer, for example, the yellow ones refer to something else. Uh, and then there are other ones where they have green stops and oh, whatever else. Yeah. So um, you sort of have to get used to that over time. Um, I imagine that harks back to the days when organists were playing in the dark in cinemas and, you know, sitting at an organ, staring up at the screen all the time, improvising on some silent film. You might sort of suddenly need to change some combinations and you know roughly where everything is thanks to the colour of it. So that's probably why that is um, like this. So the red stops are what you call reed stops. And the white stops are what you call flu stops. So um, how do you explain that? Um, there are different kinds of organ pipes. Some of them are, let's say, a bit like just a normal recorder that you might find in a children's bedroom or school. I, I hope that recorder is no longer being taught in schools. That was an instrument of torture when I was in school, definitely. Uh, it probably led to an entire generation of tinnitus. But anyway... I think schools these days are teaching kids ukulele, which is much more fun. Anyway, so if you sort of imagine your organ pipe as just a very basic recorder that can only play one note, that's this kind of thing. Now, the red ones are for the reed stops. Now, if you imagine the reed stop being something like a clarinet, where you have your pipe, the instrument bit, and then the mouthpiece bit, which has its little reed on it, um, that's basically the kind of technique we've got here with the organ reed pipes. Now, the different lengths, the different shapes, the different sizes of these pipes dictate its uh, tonal qualities. We won't get into that here, uh, but let's just say there are fat sounding pipes, there are thin sounding pipes, there are high pipes, low pipes, and everything in between. So that's enough of that. Let's get into what these pipes can actually sound like and how to hopefully combine them to make some nice organic sounds. Right then, now I have to put my headphones on for this because I don't have any loudspeakers to hear the organ, so I need my uh, headphones for this. By the way, made in Germany, biodynamic. Best headphones you can buy. So, uh, a cinema organ is different to a uh, um, classical organ because it's based on very different sounds. Now, for the, the main sound of a church organ would be a diapason sound or a principal sound. On this organ, it's actually a reed stop. Sounds a bit like a diapason, uh, a little bit. There's something called a horn diapason here. Which does sound a bit hornier. <clears throat> anyway, let's, let's move away from that. Now, um, this organ, like I said, it's a four manual, 23 rank organ. So what does that mean, 23 ranks? Well, that means 23 rows of pipes. It doesn't sound like much, does it? On a church organ, that would mean four manuals and only 23 stops. Now that's certainly not much, but here on a cinema organ, it's very different because these ranks of pipes can be used from any manual and also at different octaves. So you have an eight foot, let's start, let's find a flute, for example. Here's an eight foot flute. Okay, now here's a four foot flute. Octave higher, here is of course a two foot flute. And a one foot flute. And I'm guessing there's probably a 16 foot flute here as well. Yes, there it is, 16 foot flute. Okay, so 16, eight, four, two, one. That's five octaves that on a Pipe organ, a church organ, pipe organ, on a church organ, that would be five separate stops. Here, it's only one. And it's been extended out. So a normal octave, a normal octave, a normal um, range of pipes, a normal rank of pipes would have 61 notes. Yeah? So that's for the eight foot stop. So for the 16 foot stop, I add one octave of pipes at the bottom. Okay? And for the four foot stop, I add an octave of pipe at the top and for a two foot another octave and for the one foot yet another octave so you just keep extending the rank of pipes to make it available at different pitches very clever indeed now let's just sort of move away very quickly the main or the famous sound of a cinema organ is the tibia clauser which is basically a big stopped flute on its own it sounds like this Doesn't sound like much, does it? Certainly doesn't sound like a cinema organ. No, you need this, and this is this is the bit that makes a cinema organ sound like a cinema organ. It's called a tremulant, and that makes a big wobbly sound. So here's the big wobbly flute for a cinema organ. Which 
which is kind of cool, isn't it? Now this organ has two of those. There's a tibia clausa, like I just played there, and a solo tibia clausa, which is located in a different chamber. So if you're listening on stereo headphones, you'll hear it coming from a different direction. <laughs> And it's also a bit bigger because it's the solo to be a close and both of them together. Oh, isn't that cute? Now, now the tibia is also available at 16 foot. Let's use both of them. It's also available at four foot. And of course it's available at two foot. So you get this huge. <laughs> huge big wobbly sound and if you get that lovely sort of sort of glissando between the notes you get your beginnings of a theater organ effect a cinema organ effect isn't that cool i love that so those are your tibias and that's sort of one of the big sounds there now let me just whack on all of the uh, tremulants here because I still don't know which is which and which belongs to which. Obviously some of them are for solos but some of them are for different things. Now another main feature of cinema organs would be this, oh, actually let's turn them off again, would be the string sounds. Now on a Morton organ like this one the strings are much, oh they're lovely, they're absolutely beautiful strings and there are one, two, three, four, five, six ranks of strings on this organ but they're not available individually, they're available together. Now here's one on its own, it's called the Salitional, very cute. And if we add the tremulant to that, you get that. You get a very nice little effect there. And that's quite a sort of, for a Morton cinema organ, a rather soft string now. Next to that, there's something called violins and then the Roman numeral three. And that means there are three ranks of pipes here and they are tuned differently. There's one rank of pipes tuned absolutely straight the way it should be. There's one tuned ever so slightly sharp to give it a sort of an undulating effect. And there's also one tuned ever so slightly flat to give that more of an effect. Now, why on earth would you do that? Well, picture your orchestra. You have maybe sort of 20 first violins in your orchestra and they're not all playing at 100% the exact same pitch and they're sort of creating a little vibrato effect with the fingers while they're playing. So to recreate that sound, the organ builders did this. So we have three ranks of pipes tuned ever so slightly differently and without the tremulant, they sound like this. It sounds pretty authentic, doesn't it? Now, if I add the tremulant to that, it sounds like this. And I personally think that's quite an authentic sounding string sound. Now I can add the octave higher to that. There's a four foot version of this. That's pretty clever, isn't it? And of course there's a 16 foot to go down there. You need some bass fiddles as well. Not bad, eh? And those are just the violins. We have some other strings here called gambas. These are a bit heavier even than the violins. Here's just the gambas. There's two of them. There's only one and one tuned ever so slightly sharp. And the gambas are also available at three different pitches. 16, 8 and 4 to give a huge... huge stringy effect. Now if I put all of those strings together, that's at 16, 8 and 4, I get some, is that everything? 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, yeah, I think that's everything. I get a rather lovely big luscious stringy sound. Mm. By the way, the acoustic you hear in the background, the uh, reverberation there, that's been added by me. Uh, 
This organ comes as a dry sample and as a wet sample, as it's called, in the music studio world. And dry means there's no reverberation, no acoustic at all, and the wet, they've added a little bit in there to recreate the sound of the organ in a room. And I deliberately bought the dry version, mainly because it was cheaper, but <laughs> because I've now, thanks to my friend Jerry in the US, I've managed to work out how to get reverb to work on Hauptwerk. And I've done some a rather clever playing around with the reverb to get this effect here. Um, I'm not going to tell you how I did it, this is going to be my little trade secret, but I think I've managed to get the organ to sound like it is actually in a large movie palace somewhere in the United States. That's the idea. So anyway, so those were the strings and the tibias up to now. Now there are other bits and bobs in there, but we won't go through all of them, it'll take forever. Some of the reed stops here, there's a clarinet which sounds like a clarinet. There's a French horn, which sounds like a French horn, which is kind of cute, isn't it? Now then there's those horn diapasons that I played earlier, that have the diapason sound. There's something called a tuba, which sort of is a very soft organ tuba. Okay, now, now we're getting into the realm of fun stuff, the French trumpet, which sounds very exciting. Why is it called a French trumpet? It's a harmonic trumpet. Work that one out if you don't know what I mean. Then there's something called an English horn, which is not a corps anglais. This is an English horn. and some organs it's called a post horn, and it's a very brash sounding thing. Which is a rather lovely sound. Now those are the big guns. If we move on to some of the weird things now, there's something called a Krumet, a crummet, or a crumet, I don't know how you want to pronounce it, depends what kind of organ we're on, and that's, you could call this a flavour reed, and it's sort of, it, you wouldn't really play it on its own, but it's a very snappy little thing. Very thin, very reedy. Even thinner and reedier than that is something called a kinura, which sounds like this. Sounds like somebody's playing on tuned frogs. Then there is something called a saxophone, which on its own sounds a bit weird. On its own, doesn't sound very weird, but when we suddenly add the tremolo to that, it almost sounds like saxophones in a big band. Okay, now. You have to have a bit of imagination, yeah, but you get the idea. Now, there is something rather beautiful in this organ. Two vox humanae. One vox humana. We need the tremolo for this, otherwise they sound really weird. One sounds like this. And that has a rather nice little vowel color. And there's a solo vox humana, which sounds different. Ah. both together and we start to get a sort of a nice shimmery sound that you might recognize from other cinema organ stuff. Mm. Now, the, um, do I have it here on this, on this manual or do I have it on another manual? Yes, I do, I have it here. I have the Vox Humana available at different pitches here as well. So if I go up an octave, Hmm. Now we start getting into the realms of mixing these sounds. How about I take the Vox Humanas and mix the strings with that? Now I take my eight and four strings along with that. So there are my eight, there are my four. I suppose I could add the 16 strings to that as well, couldn't I? And now we suddenly get some real cinema organ stuff. Ah, 
Now, if I had my swell pedals activated here, then I could really play around with the different chambers of sounds there, swell the strings in, swell the strings out, things like that. Oh, it makes some beautiful effects there. But you get the idea. We have this lovely shimmery sound. So one of the staples of a cinema organ sound, like we heard before, would be the tibia clausa, tibia clausa, and this sound, the vox humane, if you have them, with all the strings, that makes another rather beautiful sound. Now you can sort of add to this. You can add, let's say, if I add the saxophone to that, it sort of fattens it out a bit. If I now add the tibias to that, we get a rather lovely sound. Um, so that's the strings and the vox humana at 16.8, strings at 4 as well. And now I have the tibia on here. But I can, of course, add the tibias at 16 and 4. Four. Oh, I had them on at four there already. That was eight and four. Sorry about that. Here's 16, eight and four. And I suppose I could add the two foot stuff now to really brighten it up. There's even a two foot gamba on here, which was crazy. So you get the idea, you can build up some rather amazing sounds there with a theatre organ. Now, I could then, of course, go on for about another half an hour just talking about how you would add up different combinations to make different sounds. That would take forever. So what I've, what I've done is I've taken some of the sort of registrations for the entire organ and saved them some pedals up there, like I said before, and you can use that to put together some pieces of music. Now, what are the four different manuals here? Well, the bottom manual, I mean, pull up one of those um, registrations I have there. The bottom manual is the accompaniment and it's what you use, let's say you've got your pedals here. Yeah, now there's a harp on there, it's called harp, it's actually a marimba uh, and it sort of bangs away in the background. So your left hand plays the accompaniment, the harmony parts, leaving your right hand free for these three manuals. Now why do you need three different manuals? Three different colours of sound. So on the grate I have this sound which is a sort of a shimmery sound with vox humana strings, bit of tibia, and even the clarinet to give a bit of beef. And then on the orchestral manual here, I have a different sound altogether. And on the orchestral, I have a sort of a very fruity sound with uh, the tubas, which is rather cool. And I can play that as a solo line, or I suppose I can play chords as well. Sounds pretty theatre theater organy to me. And then on the solo, I have a much snappier sound. Solo because you would mainly play. Play solo -y stuff on there, okay? So, and then I have different combinations saved up for different things. So I think it's time then just to play a piece of music on this or rather delicious instrument. The 4 manual 23 rank Wonder Martin from the comfort of my own home office. Ah.
So there we have it, a brief introduction, a brief introduction, there's nothing brief about that at all, but a little introduction to the world of the wonderful Morton or the Wonder Morton Theatre Organ world. Isn't that amazing what you can do with a piece of software these days? I'm so excited that I've managed to get this up and running now and um, that with an instrument like this you can have such a lot of fun. Now that's only one little piece of music there. Um, I will be recording a lot more music on this and if you want to be part of that and hear a lot more of this instrument then consider joining us on Patreon uh, or YouTube membership or Steady, that's a kind of German Patreon. And um, members and supporters there will be a uh, party to rather a lot more music here in the background. But don't worry, there will be plenty of music on the main channel as well. But uh, as a thank you for the people who do want to continue supporting the channel, uh, there will be a lot more music coming up soon. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. See you again very soon with another new organ on here and not a theatre organ, another new classical organ and a rather exciting one at that. More on that very soon. Hope you're having a good week so far. See you soon. Until then, bye-bye.